In spite of working extensively on integration, you still lose marks and wonder why. Well, out of my interaction with thousands of students during my career, vast classroom experience and collection of board papers, I have compiled the common category of mistakes that students make despite of knowing this topic. You may feel you know few of them. However, it's a good idea to invest few minutes in the video as I have tried to collate the biggest mistakes made in integration. So stay tuned till the end. And now, let's get started. Are you also amongst those students who after doing all the hard work, forget to put the constant of integration for indefinite integrals? This can cost you from half to one mark in your paper. Please realize the significance. Now, if I try differentiating all the three examples, I end up getting 2x. We all know integration is just the reverse process of differentiation. So, if I try to integrate 2x dx and you end up writing only x square, well, you never know whether your initial function was this, this, this or anything else. So, you always have to add a constant of integration. Oh yes, this also happens. I am not faking it up. Students just forget to put the integration sign as they start with the process. For example, if I take integration of x into 3x plus 2 dx, then the moment they open the brackets, they end up going ahead with this and then integrate to give the answer. Even though your final answer is correct, but then if you see moving from here to here, the moment your integration sign vanishes, that mathematically implies that you have already applied your process of integration and this is the answer, which makes no sense. So, make sure to put the integral sign. Yes, this also happens. Students forget to put the dx. That means integration with respect to which variable. So now if I give you the question this way, it is mathematically incomplete because I really don't know you are integrating with respect to which variable and where does your function end. So I can interpret this as and even if you end up writing this way, now I can interpret it this way. That means I need to integrate just this so I can give the answer plus 2x as it is or if I take it with 2x then I can give the answer however you know you did not mean any of them when you had mentioned this so apart from putting dx it's extremely important to put the brackets on the correct places so ideally it should be written this way so that we know that each of the functions inside have to be integrated and the correct answer would be this. When you feel you have mastered the art of differentiation and you come across integration, there's a grand confusion. Especially, for instance, if you try to take integral of sin x dx and integral of cos x dx, there is a huge mistake in the negative sign that students make. We all know integration of sin x is ideally minus cos x plus c, but our mind is so well tuned to the derivative of sin x being cos x that we drop writing this minus sign. Similarly, integral of cos x is simply sin x plus c. However, However, it is engraved so hard in our minds that derivative of cos x always ends with a negative sign. So at times students end up putting an extra minus sign. So be very clear what are you performing in the question. Is it differentiation or integration? And please remember integration is the reverse of differentiation. 
Forgetting to replace back your assumed variable? Yes, this is something which 90% of the students do. Well, for instance, you came across this question in the paper. It is such a eureka feeling because you know it is directly by substituting. So, you begin by putting your tan x equal to t, which implies secant square x into dx is dt. Now, your integral changes to t cube into dt which finally gives you the answer t raised to power 4 upon 4 plus c. You ended the answer and you felt you are going to secure full marks. But then when you get your paper back, there is a deduction of half a mark or at times even one. And you wonder why? Well, it's simply because t is something which you substituted. The original function was in terms of x. So make sure... After this, your final answer is given this way. At the same time, after this step, do not jump to this straight away. Make sure to integrate in terms of the given variable first and then only replace back the value. Remember the very special integrals you came across? Well, I have just tried to pick up few out of the category. Now please realize here by x we mean a linear or a single variable function with coefficient 1. Now the moment you see this question you suddenly realize that it fits into this formula and then you go ahead and say this could be written as root 2x whole square plus root 7 whole square and then you give the answer as 1 by a into tan inverse of x by a plus c. You leave your answer here and you feel you have done your bit. But this is wrong. Why? Because you forgot that this x, that for this x coefficient had to be 1 whereas here it is 2. So how do I tackle this problem? You have two methods to address this problem. Method 1, you take two common so that you end up getting the standard form. Now when you apply the formula, this half is as it is into 1 upon a into tan inverse of x by a. On simplifying everything, you end up getting this. However, if you do not wish to take two common and you write it the same way, you go ahead by direct integration but in the end, we multiply it with 1 by root 2. Why? Because we do realize that here it is root 2 and not 1. So as we know, whenever we see some constant being multiplied with a variable, you end up dividing with the same number. And this also on combining gives you the same answer. So be very, very clear that these special integrals have the linear function involved with coefficient 1. Similarly, even if you have to complete the square, either take, either take the constant common and make the coefficient of x as 1 or go ahead directly integrate but in the end, don't forget to divide with the coefficient of x. Integral of 1 by x dx. Well, you know the answer is log x to the base e or it can be written in the form of ln which means natural log of x plus c. Now here, you don't certainly find a mistake. However, conceptually, there should be an absolute value sign whichever formula you apply for the reason that domain of the log function is always open 0 to infinity. So, if you forget writing the absolute value sign, that means you are actually including any case which may be negative. So, be super sure to put the absolute value signs. We've already spoken about the relevance of this absolute value sign. Where else can we go wrong with the formula? Well, I have few examples for you. At times we go so overboard with this formula that we fail to realize that once again here x speaks of a single variable or a linear function. 
we see 1 upon x square plus 1 and we end up writing log of mod x square plus 1 plus c. Similarly, here you give the answer log mod x square plus c. And here, yes, people do write the answer as log of mod cos x plus c. Well, when you come out of the exam hall, you feel, okay, I haven't gone wrong anywhere because I've also put the mod sign. But did you realize that the formula was applicable only for a linear function? So, these are actually all wrong. So, make sure you apply the correct concept when you apply any formula. Improper use of this formula? Answer once again is yes. The major major mistake is to realize that n is not equal to minus 1 because when your n is equal to minus 1, it actually gives you this integral for which we just discussed that the answer is log mod x plus c. But that's not all. Students don't stop here. They go a step further in making wrong usage of formula. I'll just illustrate this with an example. We all know that n is not equal to minus 1 in any of these situations and we can very easily apply the formula over here and give your answer as 2 by 3 into x raised to power 3 by 2 plus c. Similarly, this one gives us the answer x cubed by 3 plus c. However, Look at this example. I have actually seen students making this mistake as they write the answer for this as 2 by 3 into x square plus 1 raised to power 3 by 2 plus c. Here, integral of sine square x dx would become sine cube x upon sine cube x upon 3 plus c. This is a huge blunder. You cannot get these answers. Once again, Try to understand the initial formula. Here x stands for a linear function. However, your x, x square is a quadratic. Similarly, your x stands for a linear function which falls into the category of algebraic functions whereas sine square x is a trigonometric function. So once again, keep your eyes wide open when it comes to applying an integration formula. Absolutely, this also happens that you forget to write these limits after a certain time. For example, if I start with this example, I would very quickly write this as 3x cubed minus x square dx and then start integrating this. This becomes and then suddenly we realize there were certain definite limits and then we apply those over here and then end up giving the definite answer. But what went wrong in this step? How can you not write the limits of integration? I know you might be under a lot of pressure and in a haste in your examination paper but then make but then make it a habit each time that you continue to write these limits until you have integrated and are ready to apply them. When you see such kind of question, you know that you have to substitute. So you end up putting cos x is equal to t and then you say minus sin x dx is dt. So finally our integral becomes, this gets replaced with minus dt and cos square x becomes t square. You end up solving the integral, putting the values also and you did not forget to put the limits everywhere. But still your answer is wrong. Can you wonder why? Well the moment you changed your variable from x to t, these limits are for x and not t. So the moment you substitute in a definite integral, it's extremely essential to actually replace your old limits with the new limits. For instance, over here, the moment you put cos x is equal to t, when x is 0, your cos 0 is 1. So this implies t is 1. 
Similarly, when your x is pi by 2, your t is cos of pi by 2 which gives you 0. So, your integral should now be written as minus the new limits 1 to 0 t square dt. So, that when you now integrate, your, your final answer is actually 1 by 3. So, these are the major errors which students make. If you have ever come across any other kind of mistake, please do share that with me in the comment section below. Till then, do not forget to like the video if you found it useful and share it with your friends. Also, do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that so far. I will see you with a new video. Until then, bye-bye.